Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. If you're a bona fide truth seeker and you have some intellectual honesty, you'll be quite happy to admit things you don't know, but any claims that you make will probably be backed by quite considerable research. Uh, and you're still faced with people that will uh, basically deny reality, uh, ignore experiments and measurements and uh, what the, even mainstream uh, authorities say about certain aspects of the way we experience our reality. Uh, I did a video just recently about horizons and uh, as usual saying that the horizon is our eye level, it is not geometric curvature. And, uh, of course, you've got all sorts of arguments that come along and, and people talk about uh, 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 pilots navigating around a globe and I ask how you actually get those measurements and uh, they cannot come back with an answer. Um, and always avoid the simple fact that the horizon is our eye level. Now, personally, I would be happy to say that the horizon doesn't prove the shape of the earth. It doesn't prove that we're on a flat earth, but it certainly shows that we are not on a globe earth and we don't see the earth in the way that it is uh, expressed in the globe earth model. And uh, we can see even from this example here, which is a uh, a basic flight maneuvers manual uh, by the Federal Aviation Administration. So it's a government authorized and issued document about what the horizon is and how important it is to the fundamental learnings of beginner pilots. So we'll do this uh, introduction here and I've just cherry picked a few uh, paragraphs that are really helpful in explaining what the horizon is for a pilot and how fundamental it is to their flying and how it, pos it can't possibly be uh, any kind of uh, earth curve. Uh, so it says here that uh, airplanes operate in an environment that is unlike an automobile. Drivers tend to drive with a fairly narrow field of view and focus primarily on forward motion. Beginning pilots tend to practice the same. Flight instructors face the challenge of teaching beginning pilots about attitude awareness, which requires understanding the motions of flight. An airplane rotates in bank, pitch and yaw, while also moving horizontally, vertically and laterally. The four fundamentals, straight and level, flight, turns, climbs and descents, are the principal manoeuvres that control the airplane through the six motions of flight. Okay. Uh, that's basically it. And of course, uh, some of you might be familiar with the, the main instruments there, which show the attitude pitch and the yaw and the uh, bank uh, to help the pilot uh, have some situational awareness. Uh, so I'm not going to go through all this bump here. I'll put the link to, uh, in the description. But uh, here's where it starts to talk about attitude flying and the importance of the uh, horizon as a visual aid to the pilot. So it says here attitude flying. Uh, of course attitude is, is the pitch or the angle of the aircraft uh, in relation to its horizontal or its true level if you like. And so here it says an airplane's attitude is determined by the angular difference between a specific airplane's axis and the natural horizon. A false horizon can occur when the natural horizon is obscured or not readily apparent. Okay, you've got some cloudy conditions or whatever, then you're, of course you're not going to see a horizon. But when it talk, talks about the natural horizon, we can see here that you've got this horizontal line, which you could refer to as the aircraft's true level or its horizontal. Uh, and the, the, the pilot's eye level is going to be something that is parallel to this, but obviously from the cockpit rather than the aircraft. <clears throat> Either way, you can uh, basically judge the angle of pitch uh, and uh, the roll here uh, based on the horizontal horizon. Okay, uh, Pitch attitude is the angle formed between the airplane's longitudinal axis. Uh, bank attitude is the angle formed by the airplane's lateral axis. Sorry about the interruption there. Um, 
All right, so on to this next cherry-picked uh, example. Uh, controlling an airplane requires one of two methods to determine the airplane's attitude in reference to the horizon. When flying visually in visual meteorological conditions, VMC, so you've got a clear view basically, a pilot uses their eyes and visually references the airplane's wings and cowling to establish the airplane's attitude to the natural horizon, a visible horizon, the one that's outside the plane basically, uh, the one that's going to be in front of you or to your left or to your right or even behind you. It's always going to be uh, at that same eye level. Then uh, it goes on to say, if no visible horizon can be seen due to whiteouts, haze over the ocean, night over a dark ocean, etc., it is IMC for practical and safety purposes. When flying an, in IMC or when cross-checking the visual references, the airplane's attitude is controlled by the pilots referencing the airplane's mechanical or electronically generated instruments to determine the airplane's attitude in relationship to the natural horizon. Basically, you've got to follow. You've got to then look at the instrument panel. Uh, if you don't have a visible horizon. All right, so uh, this is a good good uh, illustration here that is worth thinking about. We have this side on view and it's showing pitch control is of course up or level or uh, pitching down. Uh, bank control is off to, you know, banking off to the right or the left or, or, or level. And But if you just think about this, just have a, a little think about this. Here is here is an illustration that we understand that the, the aircraft is above the surface of the earth. But in reality, where would the horizon be for us or even for the pilot. For the pilot, the horizon would be this straight level line, but it would be straight across their own field of view. It would be their eye level. That's where they would see a horizon. And so we would actually see a horizon at our eye level. But this is, of course, just a an orthographic illustration to, to make a point. I'm just pointing out that um, uh, the horizon is something that is subjective to each individual observer. So the pilot has his or her horizon up here, uh, ir irrespective of where our horizon is as an observer down here. Okay. All right, so uh, now we'll go on to talk about that a bit more. Uh, this is an interesting point here. The pilot should become familiar with the relationship between outside visual references to the, to the natural horizon and the corresponding flight instrument indications. For example, a pitch attitude adjustment may require a movement of the pilot's reference point of several inches in relation to the natural horizon, but correspond to a seemingly insignificant movement on, of the reference bar on the airplane's attitude indicator. Similarly, a deviation from a desired bank angle, which is obvious when referencing the airplane's wingtips or cowling relative to the natural horizon, may be imperceptible on the airplane's attitude indicator to the beginner pilot. All right, so again, the, the horizon is the, the, the basic instrument that you use, the visual reference that is used by pilots primarily uh, before uh, uh, looking at the instrument panel to to check things okay and it's more of a case of well if you can see that the horizon is where it should be uh, then and the instruments don't display that then you know there's something wrong with the instruments rather than your your eyes looking at the horizon uh, the most common error made by the beginning student is to make pitch or bank corrections while still looking inside the cockpit Control pressure is applied, but the beginning pilot, not being familiar with the intricacies of flight by references or two instruments, including such things as instrument lag and gyroscopic precession, will invariably make excessive attitude corrections and end up chasing the instruments. Airplane attitude by reference to the natural horizon, however, is immediate in its indications, accurate and presented many times larger than any instrument could be. So here's a perfect example where you totally rely on your senses. Your senses, your sight, gives you a much more accurate situational awareness than the instruments can because you instinctively know where the horizon should be. It is always at your eye level. Pilots know this. Okay. Uh, and we'll go on to read this. It really comes to a very important point here that succinctly explains what horizons actually are and, and what we are seeing. So, uh, with beginner pilots, a flight instructor will likely use a dry erase marker or removable tape to make reference lines on the windshield or cowling to help the beginner pilot establish visual reference points. 
Vertical reference lines are best established on the ground, such as when the airplane is placed on a marked centre line, with the beginner pilot seated in proper position. Horizontal reference lines are best established with the airplane in flight, such as during slow flight and cruise configurations. The horizon reference point is always being the same, no matter what out attitude sorry, altitude, since the point is always on the horizon, although the distance to the horizon will be further as altitude increases. Okay, let's just break this down, make it really simple and reinforce the point here. Okay, the horizon reference point is always the same. It doesn't matter how high you go. All right, it is always going to be in the same place in relation to whatever your reference play point is on on or outside of the aircraft if it's the wing or the cowling or the or something inside the aircraft that is your reference point for that particular aircraft okay then your horizon will always be in a fixed position relative to that reference point when you have a specific attitude that keeps you going in a uh, straight and level flight Okay, a horizon reference point is always being the same, no matter what altitude. Since the point is always on the horizon, although the distance to the horizon will be further as altitude increases. Okay, that is exactly what happens in reality. The more height we gain above a level surface or the level earth, the further we can see to the horizon. The horizon is just the point depending on our height above the surface at which everything appears to converge or at least where beyond which we cannot really see the surface so the higher we go the more extended that surface becomes we are not looking down some imaginary curve according to the model when we look at reality the horizon is fixed in front of us and it stays with us no matter how high we go okay so you you've heard it there uh, the, I, I concur with what this is saying here about the horizon. I've got no argument. I'm simply referencing what is seen and experienced in reality by all of us, including pilots, especially when they start learning how to fly. All right, and uh, we'll just go on to mention this bit here. Straight flight. Maintaining a constant direction or heading is accomplished by visually checking the lateral level relationship of the airplane's wingtips to the natural horizon. Depending on whether the airplane is a high wing or low wing, both wingtips should be level and equally above or below the natural horizon. Okay, again, it just depends. You know, you're going to have a reference point depending on the aircraft that you're flying in. And once, it, once that reference point is established, as you can see here, for example, the left or the right wing, you can see that the horizon is going to be in a, in a certain place on, on either side of the aircraft. Okay, and you'll, you'll visually be able to see that. You can trust your senses to judge uh, whether the wing is tipping towards uh, the horizon more on one side than the other. That will tell you whether you're rolling or banking. Yeah, okay. So down here, just a little bit more to go on with, and I'll, I'll finish it up with this one, okay? Uh, the principles of attitude flying require that the reference point to the natural horizon position should be cross-checked against the flight instruments to determine if the pitch attitude is correct. Okay, again, the, uh, the, the natural horizon outside the aircraft is the primary indicator of where you are in relation to level, your attitude, your pitch, or your bank, or whatever. OK, and uh, that then tells you whether your instruments are correct or not. If not, such as trending away from the desired altitude, the pitch attitude should be readjusted in relation to the natural horizon and then the flight instruments cross-check to, 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 to determine if altitude is now being corrected or maintained. In level flight manoeuvres, the terms increase the back pressure or increase pitch attitude implies raising the airplane's nose in relation to the natural horizon and the terms decreasing the pitch attitude or decrease pitch attitude means lowering the nose in relation to the natural horizon. The pilot's primary reference is the natural horizon. Okay, there it is in black and white and glorious technicolor as well. Okay, the basics of flying. 
You don't need to be a pilot to understand this, to recognize the fact that the horizon is always your eye level. It doesn't change, it's not a curve, and it doesn't drop away from you as you gain height. Pilots know this, and any pilot that comes along pretending that uh, uh, that doesn't happen is simply hanging on to uh, a belief in a globe Earth and defending it with uh, claims that simply aren't true. I trust the science here, don't you? Thank you very much.